Welcome to Lesson 7 NS1, Day 2. Today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting with rational numbers. So again, this is Part 2 in a two-part series of how to add and subtract using positives and negatives. In the last lesson, we talked about adding and subtracting with just integers. Now we're going to extend those rules to add and subtract with numbers that have fractions and decimals. So again, after this lesson, I should be able to use rational number addition and subtraction rules to add or subtract rational numbers. Keeping in mind, rational numbers are those, so something like 9 and 3 tenths, negative 1 and a half. So now having those numbers that have fractions and decimals. As a reminder, so a recap of the rules. So when you are subtracting, we actually change subtraction of integers or rational numbers because the rules for integers apply to rational numbers as well. We change it to add the opposite. Key word here is opposite. So again, a minus b becomes a plus that negative b. So you have to change that second number. You have to change it to the opposite. Otherwise, you are changing the problem. You're not just changing the setup. Once we've changed subtraction to addition, or if we already have an addition problem, if the signs are the same, so positive plus positive or negative plus negative, we get to add and keep. Life is super simple. You add the two numbers together. If it was two positive numbers, then your answer is positive. If it was two negative numbers, your answer is negative. Where things get a little murky is when we have different signs. So a negative and a positive added together. Again, you're going to find the higher absolute value, and that's going to tell you the sign of your answer. Okay, so if my negative has the higher absolute value, then my answer is negative, and vice versa. And then we'll actually end up using subtraction to solve. So yes, we do actually use subtraction, but there is no subtraction rule, right? That subtraction is just changed to addition, and then we use the addition rules. All right, so we're going to take a look at this with decimals first. So the same process applies. I have to take subtraction and change it to addition of the opposite. So here I have negative 9 and 3 tenths minus 2 and 5 tenths. This will change to negative 9 and 3 tenths, because remember our starting number doesn't change, plus negative 2 and 5 tenths. Okay, so to solve, I will actually add, because it's two negatives, and I don't have to base it on the absolute value. Okay, so based on the, we can cross out absolute value, we can put same sign rule. My value, or my answer, will be negative. Okay, because again, if the signs are the same, I add and keep, and I don't have to worry about absolute value. Again, take your time, slow it down. So change subtraction to addition of the opposite. All right, and then here we now have 9 and 3 tenths, so we're going to ignore those negative signs, plus 2 and 5 tenths. Reminder, we have to line up those decimals so our place values line up. I can bring that decimal straight down right away. 5 plus 3 is 8, 9 plus 2 is 11, so my answer is negative 11 and 8 tenths. Looking at the next problem, it is an addition problem, so this is going to just be 5 and 12 hundredths plus my negative 17. To solve, well, I have different signs, so I will subtract, and because my signs are different, I do have to base it off the absolute value. Okay, and I'm taking the absolute value of negative 17 and the absolute value of 5 and 12 hundredths. Okay, the absolute value of negative 17 is 17, and the absolute value of 5 and 12 hundredths is 5 and 12 hundredths, making negative 17 the value with the higher absolute value, so my answer will be negative. Right, and then because my signs are different, I'm going to subtract. So I ignore the signs, and I have 17, and I'm going to add the decimal at the end. And I'm going to add two placeholders because 5 and 12 hundredths has two numbers after the decimal. 
I'm going to subtract. I can't do 0 minus 2 or 0 minus 1, so I'm going to borrow from the 7. It becomes a 6. 10 becomes a 9, and then 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 1 is 8. Bring down that decimal. 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 minus nothing is 1. So my answer is negative 11 and 88 hundredths. All right, so if you'd like to, you can give these next two problems a try and come back and check your answers, or you can work through them with me. So here, it's an already an addition problem, so I get to just do negative 12 and 34 hundredths plus that negative 9 and 2 tenths. To solve, I will add, based on, and we're just going to put same sign, SS, SSR, same sign rule, my answer will be negative. All right, so here, it's already started off as addition, so I didn't have to change it. I have 12 and 34 hundredths plus 9 and 2 tenths. Again, line up my decimals. Add the 0 as the placeholder. 4 plus 0 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. Bring down my decimal. 9 and 2 is 11. Carry the 1. It's 2. Again, my answer will be negative, so it's a negative... 21 and 54 hundredths. All right, I'd really like you to try to give this one a shot on your own and then come back and check your work. So here, this is a subtraction problem. So this changes to 19 and 78 thousandths plus a positive three. My signs are different. So I have a negative and a positive. So I know that I have to subtract to solve. And based on absolute value, well, I know the absolute value of 19 and 78 thousandths, just because of the 19 alone, has the higher absolute value. So because of that, I know my answer will be negative. All right, so I'm going to subtract. I'm going to do 19 and 78 thousandths minus 3. Now remember, 3, the decimal goes to the right of the 3, and we add the zeros after. Right, and here I can do 8 minus 0, 7 minus 0, 0 minus 0, bring down the decimal. 9 minus 3 is 6, 1 minus nothing is 1. So my answer is negative 16 and 78 thousandths. All right, so with the decimals, we're just lining up those decimals and adding, subtracting, adding and subtracting as we normally would. We just have to remember to keep those addition and subtraction processes and rules in place. The biggest thing that I can tell you is make sure that you're changing uh, subtraction to addition of the opposite and slowing down and really asking yourself, what do I have to do to solve? Do I add or subtract? If I'm subtracting, I have to use the higher absolute value to determine my sign. If I get to add, I get to keep my sign. Right? And the only way you get to add is if both of the numbers have the same sign or all of the numbers have the same sign. Fractions. Again, the rules are exactly the same. The hard part here is with fractions, you have to have common denominators still. So here I have negative one-third minus a negative 11 twelfths. Negative or minus a negative still has to change to plus the opposite. So negative one-third plus 11 twelfths. So now my signs are different, so I'm going to have to subtract. And based on the absolute value, my answer will be, well, now I know it's hard. They're both fractions. Well, look at it this way. You have one-third, which is one out of three pieces, so one out of three to make a whole group, so one out of three is actually closer to zero. So you can use a number line. Say, am I closer to zero, one half, or one whole? Well, one third is going to be somewhere over here. And 11 twelfths is going to be closer to one. So even though we might not be entirely sure, since we can estimate it and know that 11 twelfths is closer to one and one third is closer to zero, 
or even to half, we know 11 twelfths has the higher absolute value, so my answer will be positive because 11 twelfths is positive in the addition problem. Remember, you have to change it to the addition problem before you can determine the absolute values. All right, so now I'm going to have to subtract. So I have 11 twelfths minus 1 third. Now, that higher absolute value can also help us determine which number goes first when we subtract because that's just the part of the process of how do I subtract. Yes, the problem is negative one-third plus 11 twelfths, but since I'm using subtraction, I can put the bigger number first to work towards my answer. I know I need a common denominator, so 3, 6, 9, 12... Perfect. All I have to do is change one third. Okay, so to get from 3 to 12, I multiplied by 4. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. That's a very important part that we tend to miss. All right, so it's not 1 third equals 1 twelfth, it's 1 third equals 4 twelfths because I multiply the denominator by 4, so I have to multiply the numerator by 4. So my new problem becomes 11 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, and that gets me 7 twelfths, so my answer is 7 twelfths. To double check, I said my answer would be positive, so I know that I'm done. All right, here I have a negative plus a positive, so it's already an addition problem, so I don't have to change it. It's already negative 2 and 2 fifths plus 3 eighths. To solve, well, the signs are different. Here's a negative and here's a positive, so I'm going to subtract. Based on absolute value, my answer will be, well, 3 eighths doesn't even have a whole number. So negative 2 and 2 fifths has to have the higher absolute value because it at least has a whole number. So negative 2 and 2 fifths has the higher absolute value. All right, so I'm going to have a negative answer. So I'm going to go ahead and put my negative sign down there right away. And I know that I have to do 2 and 2 fifths minus 3 eighths. Well, to do that, I need a common denominator. The common denominator for 5 and 8 is going to be 40. That's the first number that they have in common. So I have to take 2 fifths. I'll do that off to the side here. And to get to 40, I multiply by 8. So what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 2 times 8 is 16. So here I will get 2 and 16 fortieths minus, well, for 3 eighths. To get to 40, I multiply by 5. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And I get 15. So 2 and 16 fortieths minus 15 fortieths. 16 minus 15 is 1. Fortunately, I didn't have to regroup. 2 minus nothing is 2. Again, my answer is negative because my higher absolute value came from the negative number. So my answer is negative 2 and 1 fortieth. All right, I encourage you to try these on your own and then come back and check your work. If you struggle with them, make sure to put a star next to them, put the correct work and the correct answer in there and then make sure that when we go over them in class you're asking questions and writing these uh, the other examples down all right so we have a subtraction problem so it has to change to addition of the opposite so three-eighths plus one and one-third well these are both positives so i will add and i mean you could say based on the absolute value because well, either way, the absolute value is going to be, come from a positive number. But we can also change this to the same sign rule. My answer will be positive. Okay, because of the fact that I'm adding two positives, my answer will be positive. I have 1 and 1 third plus 3 eighths. I need 8 and 3 to have a common denominator. The least common denominator for those two numbers is actually 24. 
So I had to take one third to get it to 24 and multiply it by eight. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I get eight and then three eighths to get to 24, I multiply by three. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So three times three is nine. So my new problem is one and eight twenty-fourths plus nine twenty-fourths. Eight plus nine is seventeen twenty-fourths. One plus nothing is one. So my answer is a positive one and seventeen twenty-fourths. For your next one, it's a subtraction problem again, so I have to change it to addition of the opposite. So negative three plus, that turns into a positive two and one third. To solve, well, the signs are different. I have a negative and a positive, so I have to subtract. And based on absolute values, well, I know that the absolute value of negative three is three and then the absolute value of two and one third is going to be two and one third. Three is bigger than two and one third. So my answer has to be negative. Okay, so I'm going to subtract. Now here is the beautiful thing about subtracting from a whole number. So I'm doing three minus two and one third. I don't have anything here. You have to remember that this is like having zero, and I want to make the denominator three because that's the denominator of my other number. So I'm going to regroup. I'm going to take one of these holes and turn the three into, so instead of having three whole groups written in whole numbers, I'm going to have two whole groups, and then I'm going to add those three pieces from that one whole group because I know that the denominator tells me how many are in each group. So this will be 2 and 3 thirds minus 2 and 1 third. So my answer, 3 minus 1 is 2 thirds. 2 minus 2 is 0. My answer is negative 2 thirds. All right, that negative sign, I know mine looks pretty low, but as long as it's in front of the fraction, it's okay. It can be attached to the 2 or to the 3. Typically, though, what you are going to see is you are going to see not that it's highlighted, my goodness. Typically, you are going to see that that is just put right in front of, kind of in the middle of that fraction. All right, so I didn't give you any decimal problems to practice because I know we struggle more with fractions. So really focus on, do I add or subtract? If I subtract, which one has the higher absolute value? And then remember to find those common denominators. The process is all the same, making sure that you subtract once you, um, if you have different signs, and then give your answer the sign of the bigger absolute value, but take your time. All right, as always, if you have questions, write them down. Uh, you can post them on Google Classroom, or you can email me, and we will go over them when you guys come to class.